Siamo quasi arrivati? Ancora un chilometro. Deve essere qui. Dai, dai, pesto! È meglio che l'alzi un poco. Franco, eccoli! Gira. This is the 1958 Coupe des Alpes. 56 production cars from eight countries struggling to win a cup. An Alpine cup the dream of every rally driver. To win a cup, your car must maintain a set average speed over a 2,400-mile course. From the coast, it's easy going to the Alps. Then, across the border into Italy by night, and a race to the end of the first stage at Brescia, 600 miles without a break. The second stage swings northeast over the toughest passes in the Dolomites, then back towards France again to finish at Megève but there's worse to come. The final stage twists south via Gap, an 1,100-mile stretch to end at Marseille. 73 hours driving with only three brakes. And to make sure that you keep up your average, there are 73 checkpoints along the route. One second late at any of these, and your cup is lost. Marseille. And Paddy Hopkirk's triumph is the first car to take its place on the starting rail. He's off. And the second man's off too. French champion Storez with his German Porsche is a contender for a cup. So too is Collange, winner in 56, again on an Alfa Romeo. The time card is handed to Ronnie Adams. Any Monty winner is a serious challenge. And so, believe it or not, it's Phil Cat. But none doubt the seriousness of the battle for the ladies' prize. Annie Swabo, only 22, but already French women's champion. Pat Moss, Sterling's sister, a rising star, but new to the Alpine. So is Mary Handley Page with her works rapier. European champion Nancy Mitchell won the ladies' prize and a cup last time. Anne Hall did the same in 53, and she's out to do it again now. Here comes the first real challenge. Up the Col d'Espigulier, you've got to average nearly 40 miles an hour. Citroen is going well. So is Harrison Zephyr. Peter Harper is Britain's most successful rally driver, but his sunbeam is being harassed by a Volvo. Harper's rival, Gunnar Andersen from Sweden, is well on his way to becoming champion rally driver of Europe. Meredith Owens is trying hard too. Steady, you're not alone on the road, Mr. Owens. Spectators the world over always encourage drivers to go as fast as they can, even when it makes things difficult for those behind. Gatsonides is trying for his third consecutive Alpine Cup. Tommy Wisdom and his little sprite, an old hand on a new car, but already they're finding the going very tough. Bajol, first of the 73 checkpoints and newcomers learn how to stamp the time on that all-important card. Now 
comes that treacherous time between daylight and darkness when long shadows play tricks with the driver's vision. On the Col Saint-Jean, sunlight still lingers, but ahead lie the Alpine giants, Alos, Cayon, Var, and Isoar. The fortunes of many will change during the night. The French-Italian border. Balisat's triumph has made it. And John Gotts on time too, but only by four seconds. Many are less lucky. Anne Wisdom and Pat Moss are the only girls still on time. Now for an easy run through sunny Italy. Lockley's Austin Healy is out on the road to Monza. Monza circuit is one of the special tests, and Storez has high hopes here. Everyone is out to improve on the speed set for his class, so as to win the points that decide the outright winner. The big cars have to average 85 miles an hour for three laps. Tax Mercedes sweeps into the lead. Then the Ferrari and Sears Austin Healy. The checkered flag and two more cups gone. The Ferrari has spun and Adams Ford is late too. Tack has made the fastest time of the day. It's an easy run on a good road to Brescia and most drivers have time to refuel. But even on an easy run, someone can be unlucky. Corbishly standard is three minutes late. Some are pleased with life. Others just want to go to bed. It's time for sleep and the cars are locked away until tomorrow. The first stage has taken a heavy toll. 56 crews left Marseille hoping to win an Alpine Cup, but already 12 have dropped out, and 28 arrived late at a checkpoint. So now only 16 crews can win an Alpine Cup. The second stage runs northeast towards Austria over some of the highest passes in Europe. Croce Domini, Vivione, Pennes, Monte Giovo, Stelvio, and Gavia. Then back towards France again over the Great St. Bernard to finish at Megev and it's a four o'clock start. Near Bagolino, Harrison's Ford storms past towards the Croce Domini, a pass never before used in a rally. There's Therese in his Porsche. And here's his main rival, Constan, in an Alpha. Already, the new pass has claimed a victim. The AC is a write-off, but the crew are safe. If you still think rally driving is easy, just follow Peter Harper on the descent. Now the surface is damp too. Not water, but petrol from tax Mercedes. A stone pierced his tank, and now he must rely on gravity.
Valley and Scalde, everyone is trying to make up time lost before Sculpario. A tighter section than many expected. Storez still has a clean sheet. But now comes the Vivione. Citroen is the only French car left in the rally. It's tough on the cars, but the Jaguar is still in showroom condition. On the descent, everyone is busy making up time before the checkpoint. Now the showroom doesn't seem so close. And the Citroen made it too. But they've left something behind. The Porsche has suffered too, but Storace has kept his clean sheet. on the Paso de Penis. But it's not so bad when you're the first car through like Paddy Hopkirk. Vipiteno, the foot of the Brenner. And now we swing back towards France again. The triumphs of Titterington and Annie Swabo force their way up the Jovo Pass and the visibility is getting worse with every car. Storace can still win a cup, but the Porsche has had another bump. The standard has been driven flat out from the word go, but it's still got plenty of steam. So has Hopkirk's triumph. Pause to cool off, for ahead lies Italy's highest pass. Through Murano, westward towards the Stelvio. That name wakes Annie up. She's third in the ladies' class, but the Stelvio could change things. The leader, Pat Moss, is doubtful of her spark plugs. Teammate Jack Sears is helping, but he runs the risk of losing more time himself. But Annie's got her worries too. Not even a Parisienne can charm that barrier up before the train arrives. And now, there's a Grand Prix to the Stelvio. The Stelvio, 9,000 feet, the most spectacular climb in the world. And already the first car is screaming towards the summit. It's Paddy Hopkirk's triumph, but something is wrong. The rear tire is gone, and so has Paddy's cup. But let's have a go at the climb ourselves. The checkpoint in the valley. Our card is stamped. We're off. The Alpha 
off us going like a bomb. But ahead, someone's in trouble. And Annie Swabo spun her triumph. The strike men, but our alpha's still to come. through and the road still clear but the Denzel isn't making things any easier for the next man Annie limps away before the Denzel but her rally is run for fastest climb. Constance best so far. The Porsche is frantically trying to make up time lost further down. But it's Balisat's triumph that makes fastest time. Only one more hairpin. 48. And we've made it with just nine seconds to spare. Next comes the Gavia, the most deadly of the lot. A shocking surface, unfenced drops, and worst of all, cloud. Gavia hairpins help to even things up, for the larger cars can lose seconds. The descent gives small cars a chance to win back those seconds lost through lack of power. Once more, dusk falls as the rally heads back from the Dolomites to the Alps. Now we veer north, touching Switzerland and finish in Megève. Balisat's on time, the only triumph that can still win a cup. John got two and two other Healy's as well. But the little sprites have found the schedule too tough. This is Constant's first Alpine, but he's up among the leaders. The Alpha of Rees and Venture is putting up the best performance of the rally so far. Pat Moss and Dan Wisdom lead the ladies and still have the chance of a cup. Nancy Mitchell's co-driver made a mistake earlier, and now she's being more cautious. to the Parc Fermé and bed. Of 44 cars that left Brescia, only 16 had the chance of a cup. On the way to Megève, nine more retired, and a further five lost time. Now, just 11 can win a cup. The final stage is the toughest of all, 1,100 miles and 47 calls. 31 hours driving from the Swiss Alps to the Mediterranean. Dawn, and the first cars are getting ready to leave for Marseille. They'll still be at the wheel this time tomorrow. 
Mary Handley Page is down to third in the ladies, but she's away with no trouble. A night in the open, but no repairs allowed. You're allowed to replace the tires, and that's for safety's sake. Constance Alpha sounds as crisp as ever. Success, but they've lost marks by pushing. Anderson's Volvo has been most impressive, and his chances of a cup are as good as anyone's. Right from the start, the pace is keen, and even Harper can't afford to let up. Call Dufresne. And the morning mist still hangs low. This is Gunnar Andersen's first attempt to win an Alpine Cup. But you'd think he'd been driving on these roads all his life. Mont Revar, a timed climb, and everybody's trying really hard. Fast driving alone won't win that cup. You've got to be on the right road all the time. Now the Col du Granier. Although he's lost his cup, Ivor Bueb's driving as though he were at Le Mans, because there's always the chance of a class win. Rounds has been at the wheel for six hours, but he still hasn't had time for breakfast. Everyone's impressed by the three white alphas in close formation. The three best performances so far, and a good prospect of an Alpine Cup each. No wonder everyone's happy. Next, La Morte and the Col de Menet. It's a loose dirt surface with lots of dust, but it suits Anderson for it's just like Sweden. Tunnels mean trouble. Sunlight to total darkness is more than the eye can take. There's only one thing worse, the change at the other end. When you're trying to make up time, there are so many things that can hold you back. It may be another motorist, or tire trouble on a tight section when you've no time to finish the job. Or perhaps a procession. But usually brakes are the biggest worry, whether they be drum or even disc. It's always one long battle with time itself. Next comes a speed test on the Subirond with an almost impossible time schedule. The Subirond has the surface of the Croce Domini, the narrowness of the Gavia, the dust of the Mini, and the twists of the Vivioni. Everyone is struggling to make their handicap time, but no one has done it yet. Even Constan isn't fast enough. Anderson wins the climb, and now he leads the rally. But it looks as if everyone's lost their cup. For the first time, the Alphas have been beaten into second place, and they're not so happy now. Nor is Pat Moss. She's lost her lead in the ladies' class. 
With a badly slipping clutch, she's lucky to keep going. Things are looking up for Mary Handley Page. She's second again in the ladies now. At the next checkpoint, Nancy Mitchell realizes she's back in the lead. Things look grim for Pat. But maybe that clutch can be fixed. But Mary's after that lead too, and now she won't even trust her co-driver to check in. Teammate Peter Jopp has forgotten the handbrake. An easy thing to do when your chief rival is just across the square. The Volvo's in trouble too. Anderson still leads, but there's 500 miles to go. Now, Mary won't even trust the officials. Sprinzel's leading the small cars, but he'll have to watch his navigation. Now everyone's racing for gut, where there's time allowed for a meal. After 15 hours hard driving, a short break is welcome. The private owners can relax immediately, but the works drivers have to face up to the team manager. Most people reach the Parc Fermé without mishap. Night falls and the rally is moving towards another dreaded part of the course. Unknown to them, ten crews can still win a cup. There were doubts about the exact length of the Soubirons, so it's been decided to restore the cups lost there. But now they're on Hellfire Loop. Galibier, Isoa, Va, and Cayol. And two more cups are lost. Anderson's Volvo crashed when in the lead. Collange was third when his Alpha blew up. And they're still the Allos. must admire manufacturers whose cars are tested on a course like this when the results are studied the world over. From France, Citroën with their ID19. From Italy, Alfa Romeo and their Giuliettas. From Britain, Roots and the Sunbeams. Standard with their Triumphs. Ford and their Zephyrs. And BMC with the Austin Healings. With her clutch repaired, Pat Moss is coming up fast. Now the big worry is to keep going. But you mustn't relax and leave your co-driver behind. In the carousel, most people know the quickest line. But there's always someone who wants to be different. This is Mont Ventoux, a 12-mile speed climb right over the top of the highest mountain in Provence. Now to the last time check before Marseille. Everyone's getting nervous. It may be brakes. 
or tires. Overheating. Doubts about suspension. Or the engine itself. Faulty electrics can lose marks too, and this is the last chance to put things right. After the car, the crew. They overheat too. The two Peters, Jop and Harper, seem certain of a cup. Already they're putting the maps away. Stripping for the beach, or even getting ready for the party. But others aren't in party mood at all. And now it's time to leave for the home stretch. Thirty-one hours on the road, and at last we're approaching Marseille. home and the cups are waiting but there's just one more test For seven crews, that dream has come true. Seven out of 56. To the French pair, Constaine and Delageneste, an Alpine Cup and best performance of all on their Zagato-bodied Alpha Giulietta. An Alpine Cup and second place to Claru and Gel in their Alfa Romeo TI. Recent venture of Germany, another cup again with an alpha. Britain's first cup this year to Barisat and Berto with their Triumph TR3. Another to Edward Harrison and Dick Havison on a Ford. And the two Peters in a Sunbeam have pulled it off as well. And so have Shepard and Williamson in an Austin Healy. And the ladies' prize finally goes to Pat Moss and Anne Wisdom, both from famous motoring families, but now names in their own right. There may be longer rallies, and some say even tougher ones. But in its challenge of the mountains, the Alpine is unique.